Today, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. DirecTV Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part? There's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at DirecTV.com. That's DirecTV.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Small businesses are crucial to our economy, but often overlooked as investment opportunities. Mainvest wants to change that. Discover how you can invest with impact and receive quarterly returns. Get $20 toward your first investment when you sign up at mainvest.com slash podcast. Mainvest is a licensed funding portal that offers investments under regulation crowdfunding and not a broker dealer or investment advisor. Mainvest does not provide any investment legal, tax, or accounting advice. All of the investment opportunities on Mainvest contain risk. Investors should not invest more than they can afford to lose. Sci-fi, youth by Isaac Asimov of a splat of pebbles against the window. The younger stirred in his sleep, another, and he was awake. He sat up stiffly in bed. Seconds passed when he inter- ter- interpreted his strange surroundings. He wasn't in his own home, of course. This is out in the country. It was colder than it should be. It was green at the window, slim. The call was a hoarse, urgent whisper. Younger bounded to the open window. Slim wasn't his real name, but in a newfound friend he had met the day before and, and needed only one look, his slight figure to say, you're Slim. He had an I'm Red. Red wasn't his real name either, but it, it appropriates. This was obvious. They were friends instantly. The quick, unquestioning friendship of young ones, not quite in adolescence, before even the first trains of adulthood began to make their appearance. Slim cried, hi, Red. Away cheerfully, still blinking, the same out of himself. Red crept to his croaking whisper. Quiet, you want to wake up somebody? Slim noticed at the once that the sun scarcely topped the lower hills in the east and the shadow was long and soft and the grass was wet. Slim said more softly, what's the matter? Red only waved for him to come out. Slim dressed quickly. Girdly, unconfining his morning wash to moderately sprinkle with a little lukewarm water. He let the air dry and exposed portions of his body so he could run, run out, while bare skin grew wet against the dewy grass. Red said, You've got to be quiet. Your mum wakes up, or dad, or your dad, or even any of the hands, then we'd be, it'd be, Come on in, you'll catch your death of cold. Meaning the voice and tone faithfully, so that Red laughed and thought there was never been so funny a fellow as Red. Slim said eagerly, Do you come out here every day like this, Red? Real early? It's like the whole world is just yours, isn't it, Red? No one else around and all like all like like all like that. He felt proud at being all allowed entrance to this private world. Red said at him side long. He said carelessly, I've been up for hours. Did you hear it last night? Hear what? Thunder. Was there a thunderstorm? Slim f- never slept for a thunderstorm. I guess not. But there was thunder. I heard it. Then I went to the window and it wasn't raining. But it was all. St- there was all stars and, s- and, and the sky was just getting sort of almost grey. You know what I mean. Slim had never seen it. So but he nodded. So I just thought, I'll go out, said Red. He walked along the grease grassy side the concrete road and split the panorama right to the middle all the way down to where it vanished along the hills among the hills it's so old that if I had father couldn't tell where when it would have been built it was it hadn't didn't have a crack or rough spot in it red said can you keep a secret sure red what kind of secret just a secret maybe i'll tell you maybe i don't won't i don't know yet red broke a little supple stem for a fern that passed methodically stripped with its leaflets and swung what was left whip fashioned. For a moment he was on a wild charger which reared and champed down his uh, 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 clamped under his iron control. Then he got tired, tossed the whip aside and stowed the ink charger away the corner of his imagination for future use. He said, There'll be a circus around, Sim said. 
That's no secret. I know that. My dad told me that. Me, even before he came here. That's not a secret. Fine secret. Ever see a circus? Oh, sure, you bet. Like it? Say, there isn't anything I like better. Red was watching out the corner of his eyes again. Ever think you would like... Ever think you would like to be with the circus? I mean, for good? Then considered. I guess not. I think I'll be an astronaut. Shumler, like my dad. I think he wants to be. He like, I think he wants me to be. Hmm, astronomer, said Red. Slim felt the doors of a new private world closing to him. Astronomy became a thing of dead stars and black empty space. He said, Precisely, precisely the circus will be more fun. You were just saying that. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I meant it. Red grew argumentative. Suppose you had a chance to join the circus right now. What would you do? I see Red affect, affected scornful laughter. Red Slim was sung. I join up. Go on, try me. Red whirled at him, strange and tense. You mean that? You want to go go in with me? What do you mean? Slim stepped step back a bit, surprised by an expected challenge. I've got something that can get us into the circus. Maybe some day we can even have a circus of our own. It can be the biggest circus fellows in the world. That's if you w- want to go in with me. Otherwise, well, I guess I can do it on my own. I just thought, just give good old Slim a chance. Well, it was strange and glamorous. And Slim said, sure thing, Red. I'm in. What? Uh, hey, Red, tell me what it is. Very out. That's, that's the most important thing in the circuses. Slim f- thought desperately. He wanted to give the right answer. Funny, he said, acrobats? Holy smokes. I wouldn't go five steps to t- to look at acrobats. I don't know then. Animals, that's what, that's what the best side, what's the best side do? They're the biggest crowds, even the main rings, the best acts are animal acts. There's no doubt in Red's voice. Do you think so? Everybody thinks so. You ask so anyone. Anyway, I found animals in the morning, two of them. And you got them? And you got them? Sure, that's a secret. Are you, are you telling? Of course not. Okay, I got them in the barn. Do you want to see them? We almost at the barn. A huge open door, door, black, too black. They had been heading there all the time. Slim stopped in his tracks. He tried to make his words casual. Are they big? Would fall? Would I? Would I fall with them? They were big. They can't hurt you. They're only about as long as I got them in the cage. There's a barn now, and the slim, solid, large cage suspended from a hook to the roof. It's covered with stiff canvas. They said, we used to have some bird there or something. Anyway, they can't get away from there. Come on, let's go up, up to the loft. They clambered up the wooden stairs. Red hooked the cage towards them. Slim pointed and said, there's a sort of hole in the canvas. Fred frowned. What did they get there? How did that get there? He lifted the canvas, looked in, and said with relief, still there, the canvas appeared to be burned. Very Slim, you want to look? look? Or don't you? Slim nodded slowly. He wasn't sure he wanted to do after all. There might be. The canvas had been jerked off. Where there they were. There they were. Two of them, the way Red saw it said. They were small, sort of disgusting looking. And was moved quickly as the canvas lifted on the side towards the young, youngers. Red poked and crossed his finger at them. What else said Slim in agony? They, don't, they won't. Don't hurt you, said Red. You want to see anything like them? No. Can't you see how a circus would jump a chance to have these? Maybe they're too small for a circus. Red looked annoyed. He let, the g- oh. he let go of the cage, which swung back and forth in fashion. You're just trying to back out, aren't you? No, it's not. No, not. It's just they're not too small. Don't worry. Right now, I've got one worry. What's that? Well, I've got to keep them till the circus comes, don't I? I've got to figure out how, what to feed them. And meanwhile, Kay swung and the little trap creatures clung to its bars, gesturing at the young ones with queer, quick emotions, almost as though they were intelligent. The astronomer entered the dining room with decorum. He felt very much the guest. He said, Where are the youngers? 
My son is in his room. The industrious smiled. Been out for hours. Her breakfast was forced into them among the women some time ago, so there is nothing to worry about. Youth, Dr. Youth. Youth, the words seemed to depress the astronomer. They ate breakfast in silence. Judge said once, You really think they'd come? The days so, look so normal. Strollery said, They'll come. That was all. I was this Judge said, You pardon me, I'll not conceive your playing as so elaborate a hoax. You really spoke to them? As I, as I speak to you, at least in a sense, they can project faults. I gather they must go from your, I gather so from your letter. How I wonder. I could not say. I asked them. Of course, they were vague. Oh, and perhaps it was just I could not understand. It involves the potential, the focusing of fault. Even though then that conscious attention on the part of the, both projector and receptor, it's quite a while before I realised they're trying to think, trying to think at me. Some fault projectors may be part of the science they'll give us. Perhaps said the justice. You yet to think of the change it will bring to society a fault projector. Why not? Change, change could be good for us. I don't think so. It's only an old age that change is one welcome, said the astronomer. And race can be old as well as individuals. The Duchess pointed out the window. You see that road it built before wars. I don't know exactly when. It's good now is the date it was built. We can't possibly duplicate it now. The race is young when when that was built. Huh? Then yes, at least they weren't afraid of new things. No, I wish they had been. Where society before wars destroyed, Doctor. What good are youth and new things? We're better off now. The world is peaceful and jogs along. The race goes nowhere, but after all, nothing, nowhere to go. They proved that. Men have built the road. I will speak, will speak with your visitors as I agree. If they come, but I think they will only ask them to go. Race is not going anywhere. Nowhere, said the astronomer earnestly, is going f- towards final destruction. My university is a smaller student body each, very, each year. Fewer books have written. Less work is done. Old man sleeps in the sun. His days are peaceful and unchanging. But each day he finds him nearer death, all the same. Very well, well, said the justice. No, no, don't dismiss it. Listen, do I wrote you investigate your position in the proprietary economy? You found me solvent. Interrupted an industrious smiling. Why, yes, oh, I see you're joking. And yet, perhaps the joke's not far off. You're less solvent than your father. He's less solvent than his father. Perhaps your son will no longer be solvent. It becomes too troublesome for the planet to support the industries that still exist. Though they are toothpicks to the oak tree before the wars. We'll be back to visit comedy and then to what? The caves. The infusion of fresh technological knowledge will be the changing of all that. Not just the new knowledge, rather the whole effect of the change, broadening or rising. Look, sir, I chose you to approach this, this matter, not because you were rich and influential government officials, because you had an unusual reputation for these days of daring to break with tradition. Our people resist change. You would know how to handle them, how to see to that, that, the youth of the races have revived, yes. With its atomic bombs, the atomic bombs returned to astronomer. Need not be the end of civilization. If it is of mine, had their atomic bombs or whatever these equivalent was on the world worlds, survived it because they didn't give up. Didn't you see? It wasn't a bomb that defeated us, but our oh, shell shock. This may be the last chance to reverse the process. Tell me, said Dustris, what do these friends from space want in return? Astronomer. Hesitated, he said, I will be truthful with you. They come from a denser planet. I was rich in the lightest atoms. They want magnet- magnesium and aluminium? No, sir, carbon and hydrogen. They want coal and oil. Really? The astronomer said quickly, You're going to ask? You are going to ask why creatures who have mastered space travel, therefore, atomic power, would want coal and oil? I can't answer that. Jonathan smiled, but I can. This is best evidence yet of t- truth for your story. Superficially, atomic power would seem to be 
include the use of coal and oil. However, quite apart from the energy gained by the combustion, they remain and always will remain the basic raw material of organic chemistry. Plastic, dyes, parochemicals, solvents, industry would not could not exist without them, even in atomic age. Still, if coal and oil were not at a lower price, for which they sell us the troubles and tortures of racial youth, my answer is that the commonly commodity would be dear if offered great gratis. Shonamo's side said, They are, there they are, the boys. Invisible through the open window, standing together, grassy field, and uh, lost in emanating conversation. Uh, just his son pointed imperiously. Shonamo's son nodded and made off a run towards his house. The Justice said, There is a youth you speak of. Our race is as much as it ever had. Yes, we are age. Then quickly and pour them out into the mould. Um, Slim scuttled in the room and the door banging behind him. The astronomer said, "Me mould is approval. What's this? Slim looked up with surprise and came to a halt. I beg your pardon, I didn't know anyone was here. I was sorry to have interrupted. In meant nation, it was almost painfully precise. He justly said, it's all right, young sir. Yeah, but the astrologer said, but if you have been entering an empty room, son, you should... Would be no cause for slamming the door. Nonsense, said the justice. Younger had done no harm. You simply scold him for being young. You and your views. He said to Slim, come here, lad. Slim advanced slowly. How could you, how do you like this country, huh? Very much, sir, thank you. My son has been showing you about the place, has he? Yes, Red, I mean. No, no, call him Red. I call him that myself. Now tell me, what, who are, what are you two up to, huh? Slim looked away. Why? Just exploring, sir. I just returned to an astronomer. That is what, that's, there you are, youthful curiosity. And Rachel us. Race is not lost yet. Slim, sir, said sir. Yes, lad. Yes, it took a long time in getting the go, getting on with it. So Red sent me in for good, for something good to eat. Don't exactly know what he meant. I didn't like to say so. Why, just ask the cook. She can, she'll have something good for young ones to eat. Oh, no, sir, men for the animals. For animals, yes, sir. What animals, What do animals eat? Shonamo said. Afraid, my son, it's city bread. Well, said Justice, there's no harm in that. What kind of animal, lad? A small one, sir. They try, try grass or leaves if they don't want that. Nuts or berries. Would put me be to a trick. Thank you, sir. Then ran out again, closing the door gently behind him. Astronomer said, Do you suppose they trapped the animal live? He was obviously perturbed. It's common enough. There's no sh- duty on my state. It's taken count- count- county. Full of rodents and small creatures. Red is always coming home. The pets of another sort of, um, one sort of another. They really maintain his interest for long. He looked at the clock, wall clock. Your friends. Should have been here by now, shouldn't they? The swaying had come to halt, and it was dark. The explorer had not, com- not comfortable with the alien air. It felt as thick as soup. He had the breeze shuddery. Even so, he reached out to a sudden need of for company. The merchant was warm to touch. His breathing was rough. He moved it in a cage of spasm, but it was obviously asleep. The explorer hesitated and decided not to wake him. It would serve no real purpose. There'd be no rescue, of course. There was penalty paid for high profits, which unrestrained competition could lead to. A merchant who opened a new planet could have a ten-year monopoly of its trade, which he might hug to himself, or, more likely, went out to all comers at a safe price. If other planets were searched for its secrecy, preferably away from the usual trade routes, in, in case such as these... Then there was only little, there was little or no chance the other ship would come within range. There's some ephemerics, except the most improbable of coincidences. Even if they were in that, even if they were in the ship, that is, ra- that is rather than in this cage. Well, a grass, the thick bars, even if they blasted them, those away, if they could, they could, they were stuck too high in the open air for leaping. Too bad. They had landed twice before and said in the stuck out ship. They established contact with natives 
who was grossly huge but more old and run aggressive. It's obvious it once owned a flourishing technology and didn't face up to the conquests of such technology. It would have been a wonderful market. It was a, it was a tremendous world. The merchant, especially, had been taken aback. He'd known the figures and expressed the planet's diameter. But with, from a distance, two light seconds, he stood at a vase of paint and muttered, Unbelievable. Oh, there's larger wells, explorers said. It wouldn't do for an explorer to be too easily impressed. And how many admitted? Well, no. Why? You would drop your planet into that large ocean and drown it. The explorer smiled. It was a general digger. It's an Australian homeland. with smaller than most planets, he said. Not quite. Most had followed along the line of his thoughts. And the inhabitants were large in proportion to their world. He said as though the news struck him less favourably now. Then you find it ten times your height. Are you sure they are friendly? It's hard to say. Friendship between alien technologi- intelligences is un- pretty improbable. They're not dangerous, I think. We come across other groups that could not maintain the equilibrium of the atomic war stage and know the, you know the results. Intrusion. Intrusive intrusion. Retreat. General to decayance, grease and gentleness. Even if there are such monsters, the poor principle remains. But then the explorer felt the hovering, heavy throbbing the engines. He found and said, We're standing too quickly. There's some speculation on the dangers of landing some hours before. The primary target was huge, one of Oxton, where Oxton Water World. Well, it lacked the size of inhabitable hot hydrogen anomia planets. Low density made its gravity, surface gravity, fairly normal. Its gravitational forces fell off, but slowly, but with distance. In a short, its gravitational potential was high, and the ship's calculator was run on a meal model not designed to play out landing trajectories. That potential range that might that meant a pilot would have to use manual controls. Being wiser to still a more highly powerful model, but that would have meant a trip to some outpost of civilization. Last time, perhaps, is lost secret. Merchant demanded immediate landing. Merchant felt it necessary to defend his position now. He said, to the explorer, do you think the pilot knows his job? They landed you safely twice. Yes, thought the explorer in scout ship. Not in, an, not in his unmovable freighter. Aloud, he said nothing. He kept his eyes on the veil of several plates. They were descending too quickly. There was no room for doubt. Much too quickly. The merchant said previously, Why do you keep silence? Well, then, if you wish me to speak, I suggest you have strapped to your floater and keep, help me prepare the ejector. A pilot fought a little noble fight. He is no beginner in the atmosphere, abnormally high and thick and gravitational potential. is well whipped and burned about the ship, but to the last... To the very last, it looked as though he might bring it under control, just like that. He maintained course following the exploration line to the point of the northern continent towards which they were headed. Only other circumstances were shade more luck. The story would eventually have been told of Vito's heroic mastery rehearsal, lost situation. That within, within sight of victory, tired body and the tired nerves clamped a control bar. With a shade too much pressure that a ship had almost levelled off, dipped down again. There was no room to retrieve the final hot error. There was only a mile left to fall. The pilot remained in his post. The actual landing, his only fault, the breaking of the vessel, the crash, maintaining the shortworthiness of the vessel. He did not survive. The ship broken merely in a super atmosphere. Fire vectors would be mobilised. And only one of them in turn. In time, when afterwards the explorer lifted out the unconsciousness and rose to his feet, he had an indefinite feeling that put him himself in merchant. There were no survivors, or perhaps that was over calculation. His load had burnt out while still slightly distant from the surface to have the force stunned him. Merchant may have been had been less lucky, but less luck than even than that. Surrounded by a world of thick, roby stoles, the grass in the distance had trees that reminded him vaguely of a simple structure, structure the native a colonial world, except the lowest branches were high above. He could sit at normal treetops. He called his voice, 
Australian base so in the thick air. Merchants are answered. A explorer made his way towards him, thrusting violently in the cool stalks and piled of partly path. We hurt he asked the merchant with limits, a spring something it hurts to walk. Engineer probed gently. I don't think anything's broken. You have to walk despite the pain. Can't we rest first? It's important to try to find the other ship. It's shirtworthy. Or we can be repaired. Where well, the must may live. Otherwise we won't. Just a moment, few moments. Let me catch my breath. The explorer ain't glad enough for these few minutes. The merchant's eyes are already closed. He allowed his to do the same. He heard the trampling. His eyes snapped even open. Never sleep on a strange planet, he told himself fretfully. Fretfully. The merchant was a wide weight too. He said his screaming was a rumble of terror. The explorer called. It's only a native of this planet. It won't harm you. Even as he spoke, the giant was, had swooped down in a moment. It was a grass being lifted closer to his monstrous ugliness. The merchant struggled violently and, of course, quite fretfully. Can't you talk to it? he yelled. The explorer could only shake his head. I can't reach a projector. It won't, won't be listening. Now blast it, blast it down. We can't do that. The phrase, you fool, had been, almost been added. The explorer struggled to keep his self-control. They were swallowing space as the months had moved pur- purposely away. Why not, said quite a merchant. You can reach your blaster. I see it in plain sight. Don't be afraid of falling. Simply that, simple than that. So the master's killed. You never trade with this planet, you never get, they never let you even leave it. You probably won't live the day out. Why, why? Because this is one of the young of the species. You should know what happens when a trader kills a native young, or even accidentally. What's more, is this trigger point, target point. We are in this state a powerful native. This might be one of his brood. That was how they entered the prison, present prison. It occurred he burnt away a portion of thick off if covering, it's obvious that the height at which they were suspended was a killing one. And once again, the prison cage shuddered and lifted an awkward arc. A merchant rolled to an lower rim and startled awake. The cover lifted and light flooded in. As, a, as was the case the time before, there's two specimens of young and not very different appearance from the adults of the species. Flecked explorer, though of course they were considerably smaller. A handful of really grown stalks of stuff in the bars, its odour was not unpleasant. It carried the clods of uh, so on uh, and its ends. But just drew away and said huskily, What are you doing? The explorer said, Trying to feed us. I, t- I should judge. At least this seems to have been a native comfort of equivalent grass. The cover was placed and set swinging again alone with their fodder. Slim started at the, started at the sound of footsteps and brightened, turned out to be only red. He said, no one's around. I had a eye, my eye peeled, you bet. Red said, shh, look, take your stuff and stick it in the cage. I've got to scoot around back to the house. What's in it? Slim reacted, reached very gladly. Ground meat, holy smokes, haven't you ever seen me around meat? That's what you should have not got. When they sent you to the house instead of coming back with such stupid grass, Slim was hurt. How did I know that they don't eat grass? Besides, their meat wasn't, doesn't come loose like that. It comes in cellophane, and there isn't, isn't that colour. Sure, in the city, out there where we grind our own, there's always this colour till it's cooked. You mean it isn't cut? Slim drew away quickly. Slim Red looked disgusted. Don't you do you think animals eat cooked food? Come on, take it. It won't hurt you. I tell you there isn't much time. Why? What's coming doing back at the house? I don't know, Dad and fa- and your father walking around. I think maybe they're going looking for me. Maybe the cook told them I met, took the meat. Anyway, we don't want them coming around here after me. Didn't you ask the cook before you took this stuff? Who the cra- crab shouldn't wonder if he, she had to let me have a cup of water because Dad makes her. Come on, take it. Then took the large glob of meat through his skin. Called at a touch, he turned away the barn. 
Toward, turned her towards the barn, and Red sped away in the direction from which he had come. He slowed when he approached the two adults, took a deep breath, two deep breaths, to bring himself back to normal, then carefully and nonchalantly sort of past. They were walking in the general direction of the barn. He knows his but not dead on. He said, Hi, Dad. Hello, sir. Dresser said, Just a moment, Red. I have a question to ask you. Red turned a carefully blank face to his father. Yes, Dad? Mother tells me. Mother tells me you're not you were out early this morning. Not really, Dad. Just a little bit before breakfast. She said you told me her it was because you were awake, been awakened tonight and couldn't go back to sleep. Red waited before answering. Should he have told Mum that? Should he have told Mum that? And he said, Yes, sir. What was it that wakened you? Red saw no harm in it. He said, I don't know, Dad. I sounded like thunder, sort of, like a cor- collision, sort of. Could you tell could you tell where it came from? It sounded like you was out for the, by the hill. Truthful or useful as well, since the direction was almost opposite in that which the barn lay. And just as looked at his guests. I suppose it would do no harm to walk towards the hill. John Lewis said, I'm ready. Red watched watched him walk away then he turned to walk turn he saw Slim peering cautiously out from among the buyers of the hedge Red waved at him come on Slim slipped out and approached did you say anything about the meat no I guess you didn't know they, they didn't know about it he went down to the hill what for search me they, keep, they just kept asking what noise I heard listen did the animals make today I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle Direct TV Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part? There's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Get the meat. Well, says Slim cautiously, they're sort of looking at it, they're smelling it or something. Okay, Red said. I guess they'll eat it. Oh, he smokes. They've got to eat something. Let's walk around towards the hill, see what Dad and your father are going to do. What about the animals? They'll be all right. A fellow can't stand all night on them. Did you give them water? Sir, they drank that. See, come on, we'll look at them after lunch. I'll tell you what, we'll bring them fruit. Any of it will eat fruit. Together they took up the rise and read as usual in the lead. Astrologer said, You think that noise is a ship landing? Do you think it could be? If it were, they, they may be all dead. Perhaps not, the justice frowned. If they had landed, they are still alive. Where are they? Think about that for a while. You're still frowning. Astrologer said, I don't understand you. They may not be friendly. Oh, no, I've spoken with him there. Spoken with him? Call that ring a ring of conscience? What would their next step be? Invasion? But uh, they only had one ship, sir. You know that because they say so? They might be have a fleet. They told you that about their size. They, their size will not matter. They have hand weapons and may as well be superior to artillery. That is not what I meant. I had this party in my, party in my mind, in mind for, from the first, as Justice went on, for the reason I agreed to see him after I received your letter. Not to agree to an unsettling and impossible trade, but to judge them real purposes. I did not count on evading the meeting. He sighed, I would suppose it's our fault. You might as well, you write one thing at any rate. Well, it's been set peace too long. We're losing a little healthy sense of a suspicion, as sure as my voice rose to the unusual pitch as he said, I will speak. I tell you there is no reason to suppose that you can possibly be hostile. They're small, yes, but they're very important because of reflection on the fact that the natives worlds are small. Our world is not what for them is natural gravity, uh, not because of our high our much higher gravitational potential. I actually is far too dense to pull and couple of the same periods. For a similar reason, the use of the world as a base, which has travel, except for trade at certain times, is economical. There are important differences in chemistry of life due to their basic difference in soils. They can't eat our food or their we theirs. Surely this can't, can be overcome. 
They can bring their own food, build dome station of lowered air pressure, devise specially designed ships. They can. How gullible you can you describe feats that are easier to race in its youth? It's simple, Lee, that they don't have to do any of that. They are millions of worlds separable for them in the galaxy. So there are millions of worlds suitable for them in the galaxy. They don't need this one, which isn't... How do you know all this information again? This is... I was unable to... I was able to check independently. I'm a astrologer, after all. It's true. Let me hear what you have they, you have to say then. We were, we, well, we were, then, Sir Consider, there was a long time for our astrologers... I would believe that two general classes of planetary bodies existed. First, the planets which form the distances far enough for their stellar nucleus to become real cool enough to capture hydrogen. It would be larger planets, rich in hydrogen, anonymia, methane. Examples of these in the giant and the outer planets. The second class would include those planets formed so near in stellar centre that a high temperature would make it possible to capture much hydrogen. There'd be smaller planets, comparatively poorer hydrogen and richer in oxygen. We know that type very well since we live on that one. Ours is our only sister system we know in detail. However, it'd be unreasonable for us to assume that there are only, well, only two planetary classes. I take it that then that they are that is the other. Yes, this is super dense class, still smaller, poorer on hydrogen. In the um, planets of the solar system, a ratio of occurrence of hydrogen of non array planets and some densely super dense water ocean wells, there's over the, over the entire set of galaxy. Remember, they were actually conducted a survey, significant small volumes of the galaxy, which we, without set of travel, cannot do. It's about three to one. This leaves then seven million super dense worlds for exploration and colonization. Just had looked at the blue sky, the green covered trees among which they were making their way. He said, and then any worlds like ours? Jordan said softly, ours is the first system they found which contains them. Apparently the development of our solar system was unique. It did not follow the original laws. A gesturist considered that. What it amounts to is that these creatures from space are asteroid dwellers. No, no, the asteroids are the one or something else again. They occur, I'm told, in one of eight pseudo systems, but they're completely different from what we've been discussing. How does it, your being an astronomer, change the fact that you are still only quoting when it's supported statements? But they did not restrict themselves to bold terms of information. It presented me a theory of stellar evolution, which I had to accept, and which is more vaguely valid than anything of our own astronomy has ever been able to advise. We set possible lost theories dating from the before wars. Mind you, a theory that originally mathematical developed, you predicted just such a galaxy as they described. So you see, they are all, have all the words they wish. All the, they have all the worlds they wish. They are not land hungry, certainly not far land. Reason would be would say so. If that what, what you say is true, but creatures may be intelligent and not reasonable. Our forefathers were presumably intelligent. They are certainly not reasonable. Was it reasonable to destroy almost a tremendous civilization in atomic warfare over the causes our historical so historians can no longer actually determine? Fondrovis brooded over it for dropping the first atom bomb over those islands. I forget their ancient name. And in one end in sight, in a plain sight, yet events were allowed to proceed to that end. He looked up and said briskly, Well, where are we? I wonder. We are not on the fool's errand after all. The astrologer was astronomer with little in advance. His voice came quickly. No fool's errand, sir. Look here, there. Red and Slim had trailed their elders from the, with the experience of youth, asked by absorption the anxiety of the fathers. They viewed the final object of the search, was somewhat obscured by the underbrush behind which they had remained. Red said, Holy smokes, look at that. It's all silvery shiny. Silver, shiny silver or something. They Slim, who was really excited, he called at the other. I know what it is. It's a spaceship. That must be why our father came here. He's one of the greatest, biggest astronomers in the world. 
Your father would have to call him if a spaceship landed on a state. What are you talking about? Dad doesn't even know what that thing that what that things are there. He only came here because I told him. I heard a thunder from here. Besides, there isn't such a thing as a spaceship. Sure there is. Look at it. See that round those round things? They're ports. You can see the rocket tubes. How do you know such so much? Jim Slim was flushed. He said, I read about it, them. My father has a book about them. Old books from before the wars. Well, huh? How do I know you're making it up? No, you're making that up. Books from before wars? My father has to have them. Teaches in the university. It's his job. His voice is risen red and had to pull at him. You want them to bear us? He whistled indignantly. Well, it, too, well, it too, is too a spaceship. Look here, Slim. You mean a ship from another world? It's got to be. Look at my father going round and round. He wouldn't be interested if it's anything else. Other worlds? Where are the other worlds? Everywhere. How about the planets? Worlds must, just like ours, some of them. The other stars probably like planets. They're probably zillions of planets. Red felt outweighed and outnumbered. He muttered, you're crazy. All right, then, I'll show you. Hey, well, how, where are you going? Down here. I'm going to ask my father. I suppose you believe it. If he tells you, I suppose you believe a fresh of astronomy knows that. He scrambled upright. Red said, hey, you don't want them to see us. You've got supposed to be here. Do you want them to start asking questions to find out about our animals? Don't care. You said I was crazy. Nietzsche, you promised you wouldn't tell. I'm not going to tell. You f- but they find out themselves it's your fault for starting an argument, saying I was crazy. I'll take you back then, grumbled Red. Well, all right, you better. In a way, Slim was disappointed. He wanted to see the spaceship at closer quarters. Still, he could not break his vow of secrecy, even in spirit, without at least an excuse of personal insult. Red said, it's awfully small for a spaceship. Sure, because it's probably a spa- scout ship. But Dad couldn't even get into the whole thing. So much Slim realised was, to, so much Slim realised to be true. So he put in his argument. He had made no answer. He was just resolved by the adults. Red was his feet, an elaborate attitude of boredom all about him. Well, I guess we'd better be going. There's business to do, and I can't spend all day here looking at, at some old spaceship, whatever it is. We've got to take care of these animals if we're going to be circus folks. And the first rule was so, with circus folks, got to, to, got to take care of the animals and be finished very ver- quickly. That's what I'm going to do anyway. Slim so said, what for, Red? They've got plenty of meat. Let's watch. There's no fun in watching besides Dad and your father going away. I guess it's about lunchtime. Red became a argumentative. Look, Slim, we can't just, we can't start acting superstitious. We're going to start investigating. Holy smokes. Didn't you ever read at any detective event? To the stories, well, they, when they're trying to do make work a big deal without being caught, practically the main thing to keep on acting, just like always. But they don't suspect anything. That's the first law. All right, Sam rose resentfully. At the moment, the circus appeared to him a rather tawdry shadow substitute for the glories of strongly. He wondered how he'd come to fall in his red silly scheme. Down the slope they went. Same as usual in the rear. The Duchess said, It's a workmanship that gets me. I never saw such construction. What well, is it now? They said, Astronomer bitterly. There's nothing left. It's got, there'll be no second landing. This is ship's dead collected life on our planet. Well, for accident, exploring planet parties will come no closer than necessary to establish the fact. There are no super dense worlds existing on our solar system. Well, there's no quarrelling with the crash landing. Ship certainly seems damaged. But any summer survived, the ship might have been repaired. They have survived. There'd be no trade in any case. They're too different, too disturbing in any case. It's over. They entered the house and the dustbin greeted woke on me. Lunch almost about ready, dear. Afraid not, you see. He got hesitantly at the astronomer. They go, if there's anything wrong, asked the justice. Why not tell me? I'm sure I will guess. Don't, won't mind a fa- little family discussion. Pray don't, pay, don't pay any attention, whatever on me, muttered the astronomer. He moved mentally to the front, the other end of the living room. When I said in low, hurried tones, really dear, cook's upset, 
be stealing her for hours, honestly. I don't know why Red should have done it. Done what? Justice was more amusing than otherwise. It had been taken the night efforts himself and his son months to argue his wife into using the name Red rather than a previously ridiculous rude young fashion name that was his real one. She said, it's taken most of the co- shop meat. Is he eating isn't it? Well, I hope not. It was raw. Then, then what, what do you want it for? I haven't the slightest idea. I've seen him since breakfast. Meanwhile, Cook's just furious. She called him vanishing out the kitchen door. I was a thrown, was a bottle of chopped meat. It's just about empty. She was going to use it for lunch. Well, you know, Cook, she had to change the lunch menu, and that means she won't be li- worth living f- with for a week. You might just have to speak to Red. Make, dear, make cl- him promise not to do things in the kitchen anymore. It won't hurt, hurt him to have him to apologise to cook. Oh, come, she works for us. We don't complain about a change in the lunch menu. Why should she? Because she's the one who's the double work made for her. She's talking about quitting. Good cooks aren't easy to get. Do you remember the one before her? It's a strong argument. So Andreas looked, industrious looked about vaguely. He said, I suppose you're right. He isn't he isn't here, I suppose. When he comes in, I'll ask for him, talk to him. You better start. Here he comes. Red walked in the house and said cheerfully, Time for lunch, I guess. He looked at the one parent and the other. Quick speculation. They fixed the stairs and said, Get, Got to clean up first, though. Made for the other door. The justice said, One moment, son. Sir, where is your little friend? Red said curiously. He went around somewhere. We was just sort of walking and I looked around and he wasn't there. It's perfectly true. And Red felt on his very round. I told him it was lunchtime. I said I was supposed to. I suppose it's about lunchtime. I said we've got to get getting back to the house. And he said, and yes, I went on. And then when I was about to the, the creek, I looked around and John interrupted the vulnerable story. Looking up from a magazine, he, he had been slightly, but nicely rummaging through. I wouldn't worry about him, my younger. He's quite self-reliant. Don't wait for lunch for him. Lunch isn't ready. In any case, Dr. Dostris what turned once more to his son. I'm talking about that, son. The reason for it's about something happened to the ingredients. Do you have anything to say, sir? I hate to feel I have to explain myself more fully. Did you take the chopped meat? The chopped meat? The chopped meat, he said oh, he did patiently. They said, well, I was, I was sort of hungry, prompted his father. For raw meat? No, sir. Just needed, I need salt. I sort of just sort of needed it. For what exactly? Red looked miserable and made silent. A shoulder broke it again. If you don't mind my, my putting a few words, you remember that just had a breakfast my son came in to ask what animals ate. Are you ah, you were right. How stupid of me to forget. Look here. Red, did you take it for your animal pet you got? Red recovered indignant breath. He said, well, you mean Slim came in and said, I had an animal. He came in here and said that. He said, I had an animal. No, he didn't. He simply asked what animals at. That's all. Now, if he promised he wouldn't tell you, he didn't. As for your foolishness, it's trying to take something, a permission that gave you away. That happens to be stealing. Now, have, now, have you an animal? I will ask you a direct question. Yes, sir. It is whispered so low as hardly to be heard. All right. You have to get rid of it. Do you understand? Where's my friend Devin? Do you mean to say you're keeping a mud e- meat eating monster animal, Red? It must might bite you and give you blood poison. They're only little they're only small ones, Skipper Red. They hardly budge if you touch them. They how many of you have? Two. Where are they? Dresses touched him her arm. Don't sip sibby chibby the child any further. He said in a low voice. He says he'll get rid of them, and he will. That's punishment enough. It has missed the matter from his mind. Lunch was half over. Slim dashed into the dining room. For a moment, he stood abreast. Then he said it was almost hysteria. We've got to speak to Red. We've got to say something. Red looked up with fright. The astrologer said, I don't think so. Don't think so, son. You are being very polite. You keep lunch waiting. I'm sorry, father. Oh, don't wait, the lad, said the Duchess's wife. He can speak to Red if he wants to. No damage done to lunch. 
I've got to speak to Red alone, Slim I insisted. That's not I, no, that's enough, said the astronomer, with a kind of gentleness that was obviously a manufactured benefit of strangers, which had beneath it an easily recognised edge. Take your seat. Then did so, but yet only from when someone looked directly upon him. Even then he was not very successful. Red caught his eyes. He was made sound as words. Did the animals get loose? Slim shook his head slightly. He whispered, no, it's the astronomer looked at him hard and Slim thought it to stop. With lunch over, Red slept out of the room with a microscopic motion at Slim to follow. He walked his sights to the creek. And Red turned fiercely upon his companion. Look here, what's the idea of telling my dad we are breeding feeding animals? He said, I didn't. I asked you what well, you, well, you feed animals. It's not the same as saying we're doing it. Besides, it's something else, Red. The Red was not used to his grievances. And where do you, where did you go anyway? I thought we were coming up to the house. They acted, it was my fault they was, you wasn't there. I am telling you, I was trying to tell you about that. Oh, if you only shut up a second, let me spit talk. You won't give, don't give a fellow a chance. Well, go on then. Tell me if you've got so much to say. I'm trying to. I went back to the spaceship. The folks weren't there anyway. I wanted to see what, what, what it was like. It isn't a spaceship, said Red sulkily. It's nothing to lose. It is too. Look inside. You could, you look through the ports. I looked inside. They were dead. He said, he looked sick. They all were dead. Who is dead? They don't screech. Animals are oh, animals. Only they ain't animals. They're people things from other planets. A moment Red could, might have turned to stone. It didn't occur to him to disbelieve Slim at this point. Slim looked too generally the bearer of such tidings. Oh, he said, funny. Oh, my. Well, what are you going to do? Golly, we've got a whopping. Whopping if we find out. He was shivering. We'd better turn him loose, he said, Red. And tell on us? They can't talk our language. Not if they're from another planet. Yes, they can, because I remember my father taking, talking about some stuff like that. My mother, when they didn't know uh, I was in a room, he was talking about visitors could talk with mine, telepathy or something. I thought he was making it up. Well, holy smokes, I mean, holy smokes, Red looked up. I tell you, Mr. my dad said to get rid of them. Let's sort of bury them somewhere or throw them in the creek. He told you to do that? He made me say I had animals. And then he said, get rid of them. I've got to do them what he says. Holy smokes, my, he's my dad. So in a panic, left Sim's heart. It's totally legalistic way out. Well, let's do it right now. Then before they find out, oh golly, they find out we're in trouble. They broke into the run to the barn and speak of visions on their minds. It was different looking at them as though they were people, as animals who had been interesting, as people horrible, eyes which were neutral little objects before, now seemed to watch them with active malevolence. They're making noises, said Slim. They whisper, they're barely audible. I guess they're trying, talking or something, said Red. Funny that their noises they had heard before had not had significance earlier. He was making no move towards them, neither was Slim. Canvas was off, but they were just watching. The round meat, Slim noticed, not having been touched, Slim said, Are you going to do something? Aren't you? You found them. It's your turn now. No, it isn't. You found them. It's your fault. The whole thing I was watching. You joined in, Slim. You know, know you did. I don't care. You found them. That's what I say when they, they come. You're looking for us. They said, All right, for you. But the fault of the conquerences inspired him away. Him away. He reached for the cage door. Slim, what? Red was glad, glad, he said. Now, what's biting you? One of them's got something on him. Looks like he might be iron or something. Where? Right there. I saw it before. But I thought it was a part of him. But he's, he's people, maybe it's a disintegrator gun. What? What's that? I read about in the books from before the wars. Mostly people with spaceships had disintegrator guns. They point them at you and you get disintegrated. He didn't point at us until now. Put up bread with his heart not quite in it. I don't care, I'm just hanging around here, being disagreed. I'm taking in my father, Kelly Cat, Yellow Kelly Cat. I don't care, you can call me all the names you want, but you don't, they don't, if you don't bother them, now you don't get disintegrated. You wait and see, I'll be all your fault. 
He made for the narrow spiral stairs and led to the main floor to the barn, stopped at his head and then backed away, where his mother was moving up, panting a little with exertion, and smiling a tight smile for the benefit of Slim, his capacity to guess. Red, you, Red, are you there? Now don't try to hide. I know this is where you're keeping them. Cook saw you ran with the meat. Red quivered. Hi, hello, ma. Now show me those nasty animals. I'm going to see so that you get rid of them right away. It was over despite the minimum corporal punishment. Red felt something like a load full of velvet back. At least the decision was out of his hands. Right there, ma. I don't do anything to them, ma. I don't know. They just would look like animals. Look like animals. I thought, let me keep them, ma. I wouldn't have taken them up the meat. Only that you didn't eat grass or leaves. We couldn't find good nuts or berries and cook. Nevertheless, let's them have anything. We have anything. I would have asked her. I didn't know it was for lunch and speaking on sheer momentum of terror and did not realise his mother did not hear him. But her eyes frozen and popping its cage was screaming in thin, piercing tones. The astrologer was saying a quiet burial is all we can do. There's no point in the publicity now. When they heard the screams, do you not, she had not eventually recovered by the time she, she had reached them. Running and running, it was moments before her husband could extract sense of her. She was finally saying, finally, I told you they're in the barns. I don't know what they are. No, no, she barred in just a quick movement in that direction, she said. Don't you go. Send one of your hands with a shotgun. I tell you, I never saw anything like it. Little horrible beast with, with, I can't describe it. Think that Red was touching them and trying to feed them. He was holding them and feeding them meat. Red began, I only, the slave said, it was not. Justice said quickly, now you boys have done enough harm today. March into the house. And not a word, not one word. I'm not interested in anything you have to say. Oh, this is all over. I heard you out as you are. Red, I'll see that you're properly punished. He turned his wife. Now, whatever it is the animals are, I have them killed. He had it quietly. Once the youngsters were out, were out of hearing. Come, come, the children aren't hurt. At all, they haven't got anything, re- done anything really terrible. If they are, they just found a new pet. John spoke with difficulty. Pardon me, madam, but can you describe these animals? She took her head. She was quite, beyond, she was quite beyond words. Can you tell me if they... I'm sorry, said the daughter, I think I'd better take care of her. Can you excuse me? A moment, surely, one moment. She said she had never seen such animals before. Surely, not usual to find animals in a completely unique state such as this. I'm sorry, let's not discuss that now. Except the unique animals might have landed during the night. Joshua stepped away from his wife. What are you implying? I think we'd better go to the barn, sir. Joshua stared a moment. Turn and suddenly, quite uncursely, began running. Jerome followed. A woman's wail rose and hivered, heeded behind them. The astrologer stared, looked at the astrologer, turned to stare again. Those? Those, said the astrologer? I no doubt we appear strange and repulsive to them. What did they say? Why, I, what are they? They are uncomfortable and tired, and even a little sick, but they are not seriously damaged. And that the youngsters treated them young, well. Treated them well, scooping them up, giving them in cage, giving them grass and raw meat to eat. Tell me how to speak to them. It'll take li- a little time. Think at them. Try to listen. It will come to you. Perhaps not right away. The dust has tried. He grimaced for the effort of it. Thinking over and over again, the youngsters were ignorant of, their, of your identity. And he had a thought of something in his mind. You're well, we quite aware of it. Because we knew... They might well by uh, may they meant why but us according to their own mind, view of the matter. We did not attempt to attack them. Attack them? Thought the injustice. Said it almost allowed his concentration. Why yes, came the answering thought. We are armed. One of our revolting little creatures cage lifted a metal object. It was a sudden hole in the top of the cage, and over the roof of the barn, each hole roamed with charcoal wood. We hoped the for each's fault. It would be not too difficult to make repairs. Justice found it impossible to organise itself to the point of directing or but to fault. He turned to his astrologer, Jonoma, and with that weapon in their position, they let themselves be handled and caged. I don't understand it. 
as Tom thought Kane. We are not harm the young of an intelligent species. It was twilight. The industrious was entirely missed. The only meal and made unaware of the fact. He said, do you really think the ship will fly? If they say so, the said the astronomer, yeah, sure it will. They'll be back, I hope, before too long. And they, they do, said the astronomer, I will keep my part of the agreement. What is more, I will move the sky and earth to have the world accept them. I was totally wrong, Doctor. Creatures that would refuse to harm children and the provocation who see the horrible. Do you not know? I almost hate to say this. Say what? The kids are yours and mine. I'm always proud of them. Imagine seizing these creatures, feeding them, or trying to, keeping them hidden. The building made him call of it. Red Tommy is a nice idea to get a job at a circus. Train for them. Intelligent. Imagine. Geronimo said youth. Merchant said, We're going. Will we be taking off soon? Half an hour, said Splorer. It was going to be a lovely trip back. All the remaining 17 of the crew were dead. Rashes had to be left on a strange planet. But they would go with a limping ship and burn on their controls and tolly on him. Merchant said, it's a bit, good business stroke, not harming the young ones. We'll keep, get good terms, very good terms. Laura thought business. Merchant said, then said, they're lined up to see us off. All of them, don't you think they're too close to you? It would be bad or, to be bad or, to burn them, any of them. With a rocket blast at this stage of the game, they're safe. Horrible looking things, aren't they? Pleasant enough inside, their thoughts were perfectly friendly. You wouldn't believe it of them. A mature one. The one they first picked us up. They called him Red, provided the explorer. It's a queer name for a monster. Makes me laugh. He actually feels bad. We're leaving. Only I can't make out exactly why. Yes, I could come to it. It's something about a lost opportunity with some organisation. Oh, then I can't quite inter- inter- interpret. A circus, said the explorer briefly. What? Why the interpreter? Impudent monster, why not? What would you have done if you had found him wandering in our world, needed world, found him sleeping on a field on earth with tentacles, six legs, protopods, and all? Red watched the ship leave his red tentacles, which live, gave him his nickname, quivered a great, their regret, a loss of opportunity to the very last, and the eyes of their tips filled with drifting yellow crystals. It was the equivalent of earthly tears. Today, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. Direct TV Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part? There's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package.